Mr Tammanjit Singh Desi. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Some supporters of the governing party in India have said that this is an internal matter. Foreigners, keep your nose out of it. Well, I can tell them why everyone's so concerned. It's because human rights are universal and a world in which they are upheld is in all of our interests. Hundreds of farmers have died already because of the freezing cold and because of ill health while protesting. For those of us whose parents and grandparents have been tilling the land in the Punjab, have a strong connection with the land and whose family and friends are involved in the protests, imagine our collective pain when we see scenes of tear gas, water cannon and brute force being used against them. When we see them herded into the protest sites like animals with metal barricades, barbed wire and deadly steel spikes installed in the road as if it was some sort of international border and not the outskirts of the capital city. The irony of it, Mr Chairman, is that many of them have actually served on the border or their children or grandchildren are currently serving in the army. Mercilessly, their water supply, sanitation, electricity and internet have been intermittently cut. Trade unionists, human rights activists and journalists including young women have been arrested with reports of sexual assault and torture while in custody. The millions of protesters are from across India and different faiths. And yet because a significant number of them are Sikhs, they have been singled out and branded as separatists and terrorists by unscrupulous elements of the mainstream Indian media. This is part of a pattern wherein Muslim Indians are labeled as Pakistanis Christians as being under foreign influence and Sikhs as Khalistani separatists, but we see you and so does the world. Let me let you into a little secret, Mr Chairman, about the Sikhs. They are taught to feed millions of those in need for free year in, year out, regardless of background or colour or creed. They are brought up to stand up for the rights of others, so you can bet your bottom dollar that they will stand, go to the nth degree to stand up for their own rights. Those of us, uh, like me, who dare to speak up for the farmers are faced with a deluge of hundreds of fake profiles or the two repeated tw uh, tweet Twitter troll factory and in uh, accused by some disingenuous elements of being, amongst other things, a racist. I don't need lectures from them about the wonders of India. I've been fortunate enough to have lived and studied in India for over four years, learned to converse in Punjabi, Hindi and Urdu, travelled the length and breadth of this beautiful country and experienced firsthand the warmth and welcome of its lovely people. And while I'm at it, let me also debunk another myth that used to silence anyone in Britain because if they offer anything but praise, they must apparently have a colonial hangar. To, to those uh, people, I would say, while we spend most of our time discussing national issues, the beauty of being a British parliamentarian is in the mother of all parliaments is that almost every day we conduct debates about what is happening uh, around the world. Now, it, it's, it won't be lost on anybody that the UK Tory government in its desperation to get a trade deal is failing spectacularly to stand up for the human rights of those protesters. So I'll call upon the government to request the Indian government to speedily order, resolve order. this deadlock and ensure peace and justice for those o farmers. Order.